When the big burn happened, I showed you the orchids that showed signs of extreme sunburn, which can be determined within hours of the orchids burning. In that video, I also discussed what to do and not to do when the worst is already evident. So here we are three months later, and I figured it's a good time to try and groom away what I can and why I am doing XYZ and not ABC. <laughs> and at the same time, show you what other orchids have done since, as well as what could have gone wrong if I had tried to immediately intervene because panic stations kicked in, which could have resulted in doing more harm than good. Also, just because on the day many orchids were immediately showing signs of having been cooked, as mentioned in the first video, which I will link in the description, it can take up to a week or 10 days for other orchids to show signs of sunburn which only becomes evident after that time has passed. I will show you those as well. And yes, I'm still annoyed at myself that this has happened. But there are two examples that have burns on the leaves, not because of sunburn. Well, let's just get some orchids groomed first. <laughs> the message of this follow-up video is not to say you have to wait three months before addressing burn damage. It just turns out that way for me. However, it's not advisable to address sunburned orchids on the same day either, as in immediately. That can cause a lot more damage than do anything good. So one of my noblies got hit the hardest, and canes literally cooked while exposed to direct sun. Over the past months, many of the severely burned leaves died back entirely and fell off, which is the best thing that can happen, because that means all the tissues at the joints have hardened off by themselves. No fear of any pathogens entering the structures. So when cutting dead and dried parts off, I highly advise to not cut into any green tissue, be it canes or leaves. We do not want to invite any pathogens into the orchid. Just cutting into the dead and dried tissue will respect that area that is still green from any further damage. Normally, I wouldn't even bother cutting the dried tips of the leaves off, as you will see on another orchid. But for demonstration purposes, you can see me doing what I recommend you to do. And I am weighing the odds of removing leaves that may still have a little green on the leaves and are firmly attached to the cane. But if 99% of the leaf has died, then for the sake of grooming, leaves like that can come off as well. However, the opposite also applies just because leaves were burnt, as long as they are 80% green, they are staying on the orchid. Silver lining and having burned my nobilies, they are semi-deciduous and eventually those unsightly leaves will fall off. It is wonderful to see that all the new growths that were protected by other structures back in July while they were tiny have progressed normally these past months. Leaving any half-burnt canes on the orchid played a big part in the orchid not stalling because there was still energy in what remained of the cane. However, that energy has now been absorbed and more canes have dried out than would normally happen. Some canes were already on their way out because of the age of the orchid, but others, well, <laughs> Chef Nina here cooked them. <laughs> anyway, in order to go into the base of the orchid and cut those canes out, I always make a conscious effort to not go in with my snips or secateurs open. This avoids nicking or otherwise causing any damage with the cutting tools. So make sure you keep the blades closed and only open them once you have reached the cane or pseudobulb you want to remove. And do not forget to sterilize your cutting tools in between orchids if you have more than one to address, as is the case here. For good measure, remove any dead leaves from the center. Some of us going into cooler and more humid conditions, anything that lies around between healthy structures can become a safe, damp, cozy haven for pests or even mold to get a hold. We would like to avoid that to the best of our ability. My nobly variety cook Sonianum wasn't as badly hit as I initially thought, so I would have done a lot of unnecessary damage if I had gone in with all the panic stations activated. As I deal with the little that I have to do here, let me show you the others that featured in the first video and Epidendrum Schweinfurtianum. Well, I am so happy that I heeded my own advice. A lot of really burnt growing points were still active and have since continued growing. Now imagine I would have taken the initial reaction of cutting them off to heart and done that. I would have lost all these growths. So yes, 
I lost some leaves, but I still have my growths actively growing. Many of the smaller ones in the back were damaged beyond repair, but not all. I treated them against scale, but lost a lead here and there because I got to it too late. But for the most part, three months later, I'm really relieved to see that just leaving the orchid alone and allowing it to show what is actually lost as opposed to what isn't, I'm glad that she's okay, and also has more new growth at the base. She might look a little janky, <laughs> but going with cut everything back to not be reminded of the mistake approach would not have done her any favors. My Cymbidium. <clears throat> Let me just say, there's a video linked in the description. <clears throat> it wasn't the sunburn, it was me. That in a nutshell. Moving on swiftly. <laughs> My Blatia bowl has been losing the bottom leaves prematurely, but that's fine. I got away with this one because it loses its leaves anyway, so I get to start with a clean slate when the new growths come through, which some are already starting to push through. However, they are going to get a rude awakening in a couple of months. So oh, what's the rush, Blatias? Stay tucked away. It's going to get cold. I don't want to do an update video showing new growths burnt because of cold damage. <laughs> Dendrobium antenatum was in the blistering sun, and while at the time the leaves weren't severely burnt, the roots cooked in the pot. A little shade would have done a world of good if I had remembered to consider what was possibly happening outside. The reason she has not gone over the rainbow bridge is because I'm going to wait and see if she will grow any new growths first. Unfortunately, she only does that during the winter months. So, I'm still in awaiting the outcome anxiously mode. <laughs> Stay tuned. Speaking of which, before we check out the others that showed signs of burn that did not feature in the previous video, would you please be so kind as to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for additional and much appreciated support. Thank you. And speaking of thank you, if you feel compelled to give this video a super thanks, know that the orchids and myself greatly appreciate that support as well. Now let me show you the neighbor of the Dendrobium antenatum. I got really lucky with my Holcoglossum kimberlianum. <laughs> Talk about a roller coaster of boo too few emotions on the patio. But all that was burnt was this single leaf, which at the time was one of the newest leaves of that growth. I am really counting my lucky stars with this one because it lives right next to the antenatum you just saw, and it could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. But it didn't. So, for a little comic relief, just check out this new root and what it is doing. <laughs> it stopped growing, then started again, and in doing so, divided into two roots with that funky active root tip. For what it's worth, I thought this was funny. Welcome to my head. An orchid that was repotted earlier in the season lived indoors to let her have a little time to adjust to her new media. Well, the angle of the sun hit the new growth on the left and toasted it. Happy to say though, that lead is growing another new growth and hopefully the roots that grew from the burnt lead will not fail. I thought I had gotten away with this one, but nope. Same with my Cattleya tigrina. This, this was a big face palm applied to self. <laughs> I had burnt this orchid many years ago. The leaves eventually dropped and she was looking mighty fine this season after having grown two new growths. And behold, oops, I did it again. <laughs> I just can't. La big sigh. <laughs> now, as we walk back towards another orchid, I would like you to pay attention to the direction of the wind. We are facing east, and the wind is coming strongly from the west. On the day of the big burn, it was very windy as well, and this staging area is in full shade when the sun hit all the rest of the orchids previously shown. And look what happened to the back leaves that were in the firing line of that hot, dry wind. Singed much? This is a first for me on the patio because while I have had Cattleya type orchids burn due to sun exposure, I have never had Cattleya type orchids burn because of hot wind. This started to manifest itself 10 days after the fact and I was wondering what was going wrong until another hot day with a lot of wind came along and I could see the leaves moving the way they are now. Then it all made sense. Nice, huh? So where is my silver lining here, you ask? She is growing five new growths, and they did not burn. Actually, that would make two silver linings. <laughs> 
And finally, let me show you the state of my twinkle. It stood no chance. But I got me four spikes though, and until the leaves don't drop all by themselves, this is what she's going to look like for a few months. So I'm just going to look past the leaves and look forward to the blooms, which I hope you will join me for when that time comes. Thank you so much for watching this video despite the terrible visuals. I hope the then and now comparison was of interest and how I groomed or didn't groom my orchids gave you something to work with for any eventualities in your collection which I hope you will never need, but again, just for eventualities. Anyway, one thing I do need is your support, and the fact you watch to the end is a great help. Thank you so, so much. And I also get to wish you a wonderful day, on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.